of 78, and we are ready for action. Right away, one thing, Larry, both teams have a little bit of the flu bug. Val Barnes and Daphne both did not uh, perform well today in the shoot-around. In fact, Daphne didn't even come out at all. And Barnes, when he first came to the shoot-around, had a thermometer in his mouth. No temperature, but he just wasn't feeling very well. Here's Street going in deep. And on a beauty of a reverse layup, the Hawkeyes take a 2 nothing lead. And that's going to be the difficult matchup. Who's going to take Chris Street? We've talked about Adrian Thomas and the size disadvantage against A.C. Earl. Then you're looking at two 6'5 players that are going to have to guard Chris Street underneath. Todd mentioned the Bulldogs have really gone up tempo from a season ago. Last year averaging 59 points a game. This year averaging 84. Key matchup, Kenyon Murray. He's the Juco All-American Smith. Murray, quick and taller than most of the guards that Smith would see. And what you see, too, is that the, the Bulldogs try and keep the wings wide. They'll also set some screens, try and let Smith go one-on-one. -on -one. Smith goes one-on-one -on -one with a shot clock at five, and the rebound underneath taken by Thomas. Thomas gets it again and ties the ball game. And one thing that Drake will have to do well to say in this one is to rebound well. That's been a problem for us. Turnover Hawkeyes, the ball goes back to the Bulldogs. Dribble penetration going to be very important. That's going to be one way the Bulldogs are going to get shots down in the lane. It's going to be very difficult to just make an entry pass and have Thomas turn around. From the perimeter, it is Daphne leaving it short. Thomas is right underneath for the rebound, and now Winters pulls it down for the Hawkeyes. And so far, the undersized Adrian Thomas is doing a good job on the offensive glass for Drake. I will lead 4-2 to as A.C. Earl coming off a season high, 25 connects. A difference for Rudy Washington, obviously, he knows the Davis style. While he was at Iowa, Tom Davis used full court pressure a lot of the time, especially starting the game. Here, I was using half court track. A.C. Earl with the block, and that is his 26th of the season. Well, right there, Tom O'Neill, the official, making the call as Kenyon Murray takes that ball, comes down. He tries to release it early enough so he's not called for the travel, and they end up giving the travel call. Junior from Los Angeles, William Celestine putting the ball in bounds. And there is Kurt Smith. He is really listed as a legend in the Washington, D.C. area off the playground. Allen with the miss, and the Hawkeyes come up the floor leading great 4-2. Well, you've got to get somebody on Jeff Allen. He almost got that first three to go down. Hawkeyes got to be very aware of his stand still shooting. Street one-on-one -on -one against William Celestine. Coming up with it is Daphne. Smith leaves the three long and another offensive rebound by the Bulldogs. One thing about Kurt Smith, he's not a bashful type. No, he's not. He likes to create. Rudy Washington says sometimes he gets out of control, but it's, it's kind of the style he brings to this court, and Rudy doesn't want to put a hamper on that. He wants to let him go, try and create opportunities for his teammates. He's averaging 21 points and five assists a game, so he really creates a lot of Bulldog offense. <laughs> Celestine blocked by Earl. AC's second block. But the takeaway by Daphne to tie the score. Darren Daphne, transfer from UCLA. Connects and it's 4-4. Four four. And you'll see Drake use pressure of their own. 1-3-1 or a 2-2-1. Two, two, one thing you have to do, Earl is talking to the player, and as he talks, loses his concentration. Just a little bounce pass right there, Daphne, with the intercept and bucket. Game tied at four, Barnes tries to untie it and does, and Val is suddenly red hot from three-point range. He had one of his first 12 this year. Since then, he is 11 of 19 shooting threes. Oh. Oh. Moving the ball from side to side, but that time overthrowing. 
Celestine, and the ball goes back to the Hawkeyes as Tom Davis will make his first change. Kenyon Murray checks out. Jim Bartles comes in. You look at Rudy Washington in his third year. 18 victories, 44 losses, 0-2 against the Iowa Hawkeyes. You, know, you mentioned about the sickness from each team. Drake had a little problem down at LSU where some of the players and uh, some members of the traveling party got sick during a breakfast down there before that LSU game. So it really affected the team and members of the party. Barnes comes up with a steal. Iowa leads by three. 15-40 left first half with looking Bill into the Hawkeye attack. Drake's doing a lot of trapping. There's open Iowa players away from the ball. They're going to have to be able to find those men on the weak side. And the first foul of the ball game is whistled against Adrian Thomas. Thomas is 6'6", really undersized in the middle, perhaps the smallest pivot in the valley. He's undersized tonight against A.C. Earl. So we have a timeout, 15-29 left in the first half. We'll be back after this message, which is brought to you by DuPont Accent. For the private use of our audience, any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated is prohibited. Jay Webb inserted into the Iowa lineup, and hasn't he been a pleasant surprise for Tom Davis? Well, I'll tell you, Jay Webb has gotten a lot of people's attention, including Rudy Washington, thinks he's one of the most improved players on the Iowa team. And Rudy would know because he was there when Jay first arrived in Iowa City. 7-4, Hawkeyes lay on a foul, Barnes 3, and Barnes again goes up with it. And clearing the rebound is a Brett Sherrill. He just came into the lineup after the timeout. That is Sherrill. And AC gets a little piece of that one also. His third block in the ballgame. And all three have been from Drake players who have the ball on the perimeter, but yet they dribble in and take the shot, and it gives AC a chance to react and get his hand out. Hawkeyes had a cold shooting spell, but the Bulldogs are the same, and so as a result, no one scored in over a minute. The junior college crash were out of Texas. Clayton Allen connecting. Right now, Smith and Allen, very quick for the Iowa guards. Jimmy Bartles was guarding Smith. Look for him maybe next time to take him one-on-one. -on -one. Earl gets past Thomas, who tried to take the charge, but really more or less fell down. AC with his second basket, and the Hawkeyes lead Drake 9-6. Move along the baseline by Allen and with the rebound is Webb and Jay Webb has come into the fray and picked up a rebound at both ends of the floor. Hawkeyes <laughs> about to go back to their bench. One of the changes will be at the point. Monterey Glasper is ready to check in. Wade Lookingville made a nice cut on the baseline open. Webb did not get him the ball. Travel on Earl. The ball back to the Bulldogs. A zero big story. Been on the defensive end of the floor. And Clayton Allen takes it right in, dribbles right into him, where AC Earl can get the hand on the shot. His third of the game. 28 now for the season. Three tonight. 305 in his career. And of course, every time he blocks one, it's an Iowa record, and he moves up the ladder of career shot blockers. He's in 19th place right now on the all-time shot blocking list. Iowa goes to the zone, a 1-3-1, Street looking for the trap. Smith kicking it off for Allen. Sherrill and Webb with rebound number three. Uh, Brett Sherrill's just struggled, Larry, from the floor. He's only hitting 36%. He shot well in the two exhibition games, but ever since the regular season, Sherrill has really struggled from the field. Just under 13 left in this first half. Hawkeyes leading by three in the takeaway by Sherrill. Nice defensive effort. And Smith creates and scores. Nice job by Smith. He shoots that ball on the way up. That way you can challenge his shot blocker because he releases early. He's only 5'9", but you know the old cliche plays a lot bigger. He really does. That is something you don't see much of. And it's hard to time that to go up and contest the shot. Winter is getting tied up by the former Hawkeye. Ray Slater is now coming to the lineup for Drake. Winters is squared up. 
but doesn't protect the ball. You've got to swing your arms, keep the ball free from the opponent, and this miss between the legs. As we said, too quick for Jim Bardo. Took him right to the basket. And there is a look at Kurt Smith out of Washington, D.C. in Compton Junior College in California. Could have gone to a lot of big-time schools. Was recruited by Arizona, by, rather, by Arkansas, by Southern Cal, Providence, among others. Big scramble. Winners comes out with it. That is Big Ten basketball or football. Take your choice. That's the weak side that's wide open. Bartles having a tough time at long range, but three under for the follow, and a foul is called. Watch this scramble under the great basket a moment ago. This is something else. You've got three or four people reaching in, hacking across the arms. Winters frees himself up, and then the point guard, Glasper, comes to get it. And back to live action following the foul called on the Hawkeyes. It's great basketball. They take the lead with the hoop. And Slater will take it right to the hole, but he runs into Earl. He's got to stop and pop on those. It's great basketball. One thing that's really changed about this rivalry, there was a time in Best Auditorium when the Hawkeye fans could make as much noise as Drake. That's no longer the case here. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. Beautiful Drake Center. And Tom Davis told us that the shoot-around gentleman in the interstate game is a war, and this is certainly that. Well, and part of the war now has been brought to the Hawkeyes by the Drake Bulldogs. This is a home court advantage for Drake. Iowa playing very ragged. In fact, it's an ugly game right now. Miss Vine Slater, the former Hawkeye who had to leave after one semester, ran into some personal problems, went back home. His grandmother had passed away and tried to, to re-put together his life, went to a junior college in Texas, and then Rudy Washington been able to find him and get the association going again. by Jeff Allen. His first foul, the Bulldogs second. Well, I think, Larry, watch next time down the court. See if Drake goes to what I call four on the floor. Four people along the baseline and Smith with the ball. Smith can take anybody on this Iowa team so far and take them one-on-one. -on -one. With that in mind, it looks like Kevin Smith comes into the Iowa Hawkeyes to probably try and check that quickness. A good substitution by Coach Davis. So we have quick against quick. Smith against Smith at the point. Earl on the turnaround. And both teams really shooting poorly at the outset of the ball game. You think good defense has something to do with that, gentlemen? I think defense, I think the interstate rivalry, as you talked about, has a lot to do with it. And Drake is a lot better than we've seen for the last three years. Jeff just, Allen with his second foul. They're just better athletically. It's Rudy Washington using the LSU game, which they played very well. And this game against Iowa say, hey, we know we're better than last year. Let's see how we match up against some outstanding programs. Last year, Drake won six. They have already won four this year. And as Todd mentioned, they went down to LSU Saturday, led in the first half of that game by 16 points. And bear in mind, LSU has just four home court losses in their last 45 games. Celestine on the rebound, and the Bulldog can take the lead. Double dribble by Daphne. The ball goes back to Iowa. I think a key right now to, is to watch Iowa. Last two times down court, A.C. Earl faded away in a shot. Val Barnes faded away in a shot. I tell you, they are not challenging Drake, taking it to the glass. And already the indication of how this game has gone from end line to end line. Rudy Washington substituting quite a bit here in just the first nine and a half minutes of this game. You see now Dan Nucky into the ball game. Smith goes to bed. And now Drake shows the 1 2 2 half court trapping zone. Rudy Washington substituting the way he wants to by three and 11 to eight. Really a nice play off a high post pick and it was brought by Kevin Smith penetration. He had a nice line the other night. Six assists and one turnover. Here's Barnes. Blows the layup and the rebound taken down by Dan Hickey. And it is great basketball. 
10.54 to go in the half. Iowa 11, Greg 8. I know Val Barnes taking it up. I don't know if it's a lack of concentration or not. As we said earlier, he had not felt well today. Had a touch of the flu. Part of that, just lack of concentration. Into the lineup of Marvin King. Where's number 44 for Drake? He is another of the junior college transfers. Actually, he's a, a true uh, high school. Came out of high school from Texas. From Missouri City, Texas. His second year of Drake. He can play the post. Also goes to the fourth spot. They can rotate him at three when they go to a bigger lineup. Bulldogs continue struggling from the perimeter. This side is three, and Nucky runs into three. Look at this pass by Kevin Smith. Larry, when Kevin Smith comes into the lineup, the speed tempo of the Iowa team just goes up, up a notch. All the way, he saw Chris Street on the trail position. Nice no look. First foul on Nucky, but the fourth foul on Drake. The Hawkeyes have committed just one. Chris Street from just down the road from this facility in Indianola. He's in the top five right now in the Big Ten in field goal percentage, free throw percentage, and of course rebounding. Street with four. Looking Bill now replaces him in the Iowa attack. Against Hawkeye pressure, here's Dan Nucky. The Smiths out of there right now, and Nucky running the ball up, and a turnover against the Bulldogs. Todd, I will say one thing. Looks like Rudy Washington's trying to use all his players, the young ones, even in a big game like this, getting some experience in front of a sellout crowd. Well, you're going to need that experience later. These kids are only going to get better as the season goes on. He wants to get them into the big game situation against players of the nature of ACL and Chris Street inside. That's valuable experience. And, of course, both teams starting their conference season after this game. Taken away by Barnes. I will lead it by five of 13-8. Here's Earl. The penetration by Kevin Smith made that play. Great touch by A.C. Earl. 6-10. Little ball fake. Steps inside. Got to hit shooting range. Knocks it down. Hawks have a lead of seven and a six-point run underway. A little shoving here between Clayton Allen and uh, Kevin Smith underneath. I think Kevin Smith's going to get the foul. For Smith, it's his first for the Hawkeyes their second. And Rudy Washington continuing to use his bench a lot. And as we mentioned, Rudy Washington came here after being at, at Iowa for five years and said, I'm going to play the Iowa system. He got away from it last year, but as you said earlier, Todd, he's gotten back to it this year. He has better backcourt players to play the up-tempo style to get up and down the court and score a lot of points. Last year, he didn't have that. He had to concentrate on defense, limit the amount of possessions, try and play teams closer. This season, with the added depth, the added talent, he can go back to that style he likes. Bulldogs have not scored in approximately four minutes, and they are down by seven. I'll be surprised if Drake doesn't try and get Allen the ball more, get him some shots. He has not been a factor at all. And he is virtually a 50% three-point shooter. Drake very tentative right now. They don't really want to go down inside and then kick it out for the outside shot, just content to pass it around the perimeter. Iowa transitioning well, and Murray finishes it off. And Drake was talking to each other about how to set up the press. They were trying to get their new players in position. While that was going on, Iowa took off the score. And the Drake turnover gives the Hawkeyes the ball. So Iowa's on a roll. They have scored eight unanswered points. And a chance to make it more following his timeout. 7.53 to go in the first half. It is Iowa 17-8 lead. Let's take a look at some quick stats brought to you by Norwest Bank. Well, Larry, it's been eight unanswered points by the Hawkeyes. Iowa rebounding, trying to take it up a notch, 13 to 9. Of course, turnovers 9 by Iowa. Drake frigid right now, 4 for 17. The Bulldogs have not scored in 4 minutes and 50 seconds. But they've got an opportunity now on the Hawkeye turnover. Iowa turning the ball over an unusually high amount in this first half. They average 18 turnovers a game. 
and Kenyon Murray, who blocked four the other night against Central Connecticut State, comes out of nowhere to get another one. I'll tell you, Mr. Earl, after the game, and I don't mean AC the player, his dad said, how'd you like Kenyon Flurry? And that's what it is, <laughs> it boy. Was. He gets in a flurry of action awfully quick out there. Celestine off the sneaker of street, and so once again, the Bulldogs will play it. Although I'm not so sure it isn't Kenyon Blurry sometimes. I'll tell you, he is so quick. As the kids call him Rocket Man. John Davis, 6-0 against the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah, go Bob! As Thomas backing Earl down, getting around him. Celestine goes up in a crowd, and he gets hacked. That's where William Celestine is effective, is down inside. He's, the, he's Drake's best offensive rebounder. Gets a lot of his points that way on putbacks going to the free throw line. And so William Celestine, who is an excellent free throw shooter, goes to the line after the foul on Bartles. Celestine, 10 out of 11 this year. A.C. Earl trying to be an intimidating factor, which he is. That may Thomas go underneath the underside of the basket, try and reverse it, but it got Celestine in position to rebound. 17 to 9, Street with a rebound. The knock away, a terrific play by Smith. And he finishes it. What a point guard, Kurt Smith. Jimmy Bartles tried to do the particular play, knowing where the man would be, rather than reading the defense, and the ball got intercepted. Earl in deep tries to go against Thomas, and Thomas fouls him. Adrian Thomas with his second foul. Five team fouls now on Drake, and three against Iowa. All set up by the quickness. Kirk Smith finishes it strong. Doesn't mind going against players that are bigger. He's used to it, and he finds a way to get the ball up there at the basket. And you look at Smith, you're looking at a young man that was recruited by Arkansas, Providence, signed with Temple originally. So he's a big time player coming out of high school. And Rudy Washington knew him coming out of high school. That's how he developed the ties. Stayed in contact over those two years, and here he is at Drake, the biggest recruiting catch that Rudy Washington has had to date here as the coach of the Bulldogs. And some say the best point guard in Bulldog history. Earl with eight. Now is nine. That basket by Smith, by the way, the first Drake bucket in nearly six minutes. As you look at Rudy Washington, he'll even tell you John Thompson at Georgetown helped him get Smith, and of course, Smith's brother played at Georgetown, Charles Smith. And then had a stint with the Boston Celtics. And on the Olympic team as well, that uh, medal. Of course, Rudy, John Thompson, longtime friend. Rudy's recruited the Washington area. John knew he wasn't going to take him, so he wanted to make sure he went and played for a friend. Smith deflects it away from Smith. Kevin knocking it away from Kirk. A friend being someone other than a Big East team. That's right. That, that's why I wanted him. <laughs> and 1,500 miles from the closest Big East team at that. <laughs> Celestine finds Allen. And it's a backcourt violation. The deflection by Kevin Smith. But off of Kurt Smith. At least that's what the officials think, even though Rudy Washington didn't. Well, see if we can get a take a look at it. It goes off Kevin Smith. Ooh, it looks like it just caught the fingertip. And I believe that is the correct call. Yeah, I do too. So well, Street will inbound for the Hawks, who lead by seven. And Allen had possession of the ball down underneath and threw it out that way, so it would obviously be a backcourt. Six minutes, 30 seconds left in this first half. If the Hawkeyes win, they win the Interstate Series, the Mythical State Championship, for the second time in three years. Later, on the foul. Great just starting their round of Interstate play. They've got both Iowa State and two meetings in the conference against Northern Iowa still to come. Great in traffic. Last time that ball was intercepted on the inbound play, right there is one way that Rudy Washington knows the Tom Davis system a little bit, knows where he likes to go on the out-of-bounds play. He had his players pretty good anticipate. Uh, that's an area he was concerned about, too, the out-of-bounds play. He was real concerned about how he was going to shut that off, keep Iowa from getting an easy basket by taking it out-of-bounds. 
street now with five, including three of three from the line. The foul on Smith was his first. We talked Rudy Washington today. Rudy told us street is the glue of the Iowa team. He feels he's a real key factor. He also said he was a rebounding coach's dream come true. And with 6-10 left to play in this first half, an Iowa leading break, 20-11. The Bulldogs will reset. Inbounding, William Celestine. The Big Ten officiating crew tonight, Tom O'Neill, Sam Licklider, Sid Rodeheffer. Harry Stanley, big guy, 42, taking the ball momentarily. Going right back up with it, William Celestine, his first bucket, and now the Bulldogs put on a run and closed it within seven. Barnes gets the roll. Finds a friendly rim. Hawkeye's attacking pressure. It looked like A.C. Earl's hand might have been up on that rim. Well, another look I'm curious to see. Uh, there are plenty of Bulldog fans that think it did. Smith takes it to the hole, and it looks like he did, in fact, get a piece of that as it laid up there on the front of the iron. Great for the lead of nine. Five and a half minutes left in the first half. For both teams, the tune-up before conference play. Here's Allen, a terrific three-point shooter. His first of this ball game, but he has hit 20 of 41 coming in. That would be a huge development for Drake if Jeff Allen can get hot from behind the arc because he can just simply carry the Bulldogs offensively when he gets the hot hand. Real nice move around Stanley. And Stanley with a foul. The big, it is a bit heated tonight. Yeah, the big body Stanley. And then, of course, looks like one of those Stanley Roberts almost. Big wide body. And Drake has a lot of fouls they can give in that post position. AC Earl is not going to find anything coming easy tonight. Stanley, 6'11", 261 pounds. And that may be on the light side, according to Rudy. <laughs> Well, he had a back operation his junior year in high school and went a little bit unnoticed and had a good senior season. Rudy recruited him, thought that he was a, a, a bit of a project, but he's really contributed more than even Rudy thought he would here in, in the early going of his freshman season. Earl now with 10. He's got 10, Street's got 6, and that's 16, and the Hawkeyes 23. Drake to the line twice. They've hit one of them. The Hawkeyes have been there seven times, and they have hit six of them. Talk about free throws. How critical are they in the game? Ask Indiana yesterday, huh? Oh, yeah. When you come that close, you look at that a lot. And, of course, that's who I will play Wednesday night. I have it for you right here at 7 o'clock. of the way in, counts the basket. Six for Kurt Smith. He puts it on the floor. This is what Kurt Smith does best, create. A.C. Earl out of the game. Kurt Smith takes it right down the lane. Okay, then you talk about A.C. Earl. He makes the last free throw, and then he gives a little wink. Who to? Stanley, over there. He said, hey, I made it. <laughs> You know, point of emphasis this year is no trash talking. Didn't say anything about trash weight. <laughs> there have been a few in this ball game. Bartles in, Smith out, which means Barnes goes from the off guard to the point. With 4.57 to play in the half, and uh, Iowa leading great, 24 to 19. And as Rudy said today, the trash talking a little bit lighter, a little quieter this year because of that new rule. And that's the point you made, Todd. Not that it isn't going on, it's just a little softer. Later. Little touch foul that time by Drake. Drake fans not happy about it. Rudy discussing it with the officials, and he knows them from his Big Ten days. In fact, one of the officials, Tom O'Neill, who works the Valley, started to drive to Veterans Auditorium. He thought the game was <laughs> going to be there. All of a sudden, he looked at his itinerary, said, whoops, I got another couple miles to go. Well, it was for some 30 years. He would have got a real shock if he'd have <laughs> got in there and seen campers and boats all over the place. 
six for Barnes. I will lead 24 to 19. Portion of the huge crowd. Again, every seat is taken to Drake Center. Notice A.C. Earl does not stay out very long. His intimidation, his defense, and his rebounding is needed in this game. with seven and the Iowa lead is 26 to 19. They've led by as many as nine. Drake has not led in this ball game. It was tied early at two and at four. Just under five minutes in the first half. Okay, that's a high crossover dribble. Almost a carry. Kurt Smith's going to have to be a little careful with that. Here's Jarrell on the jump shot on the rebound by E.C. Earl, his third. Bulldogs, real problem, just not getting the shots to go down. The getting shot, just not falling. Barnes finds Looking Bell, a great pass by Val Barnes. 28 to 19. An Iowa lead as Smith finds Allen. Tempo picking up now, Todd. Earlier, it was not as big a scoring or as, as quick a tempo. Who does a slower tempo favor in this game, would you think? I think the lower the score, really, Larry, the, the better it favors Drake because they'll be able to stay in the game and keep Iowa within range. Earl with 13, and Iowa lead 30 to 21. On the foul, Winter. Don't you think, Todd, though, Drake's strength to score is from the perimeter or with the perimeter people. They've got to get it up tempo so they don't have to face AC Earl. Well, they need to get it up tempo, but they've also got to break down the defense and get inside. If that takes you 20 seconds to do that and then get some dribble penetration, it doesn't matter. That's right. I think you're both right. It's Iowa 30, Drake 21. We'll be back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. Game in the Interstate Series for the Hawkeyes, their last. These games are always interesting. Well, people talk about the Iowa schedule and some of the other major conference uh, teams across the country having weaker schedules. But Tom Davis looks and says, hey, for the state championship, this is this particular game. And I don't think people will understand how difficult these games are, meaning the Interstate games. I'd agree with Tom. I don't care how good or how poor a team is. If you're you and I, Drake, Iowa, Iowa State, you play hard. There's, there's a lot of pride in these games. And with the big crowd on hand, it gives it a Big Ten atmosphere in the, before the league season begins. And it begins in a Big Ten atmosphere at Indiana on Wednesday night. Of course, the Bulldogs start on the road also. They open at Creighton on Saturday to begin Missouri Valley Conference play. Iowa now goes to their zone. Now in the Bulldog lineup, Allen, Smith, also in there, Ray Slater, the former Hawkeye. But Iowa goes to the zone when Jeff Allen is out of there, the best three-point shooter. Smith over the zone, rounding out the Bulldogs on the floor now, number 42, Kyrie Stanley, and also in the lineup for Drake as they made some, several changes after that timeout is Clayton Allen. Well, you mentioned the score, how, how low scoring it is. Iowa's half-court defense just does not allow you to get out and score a lot of points because they're they're just stopping this Bulldog offense right there. Kind of a frustration shot that Kurt Smith lets go from behind the three-point line. Now Drake goes to their zone. Iowa will be very patient. Celestine with the steal. Well, they would have been if they hadn't thrown it away. Smith on the penetration, Earl on the block, his fourth. Smith finds Street underneath, and Celestine is on it. The Hawkeyes want goaltending. The Bulldog crowd wants traveling. And I'm not so sure that ball wasn't meant for another Iowa player other than Chris Street. Chris comes, it looked like Kenyon Murray was already there. Again, good communication for Kevin Smith to create the lane. There may have been a travel on that. And great hustle by Chris Street to get down the floor and fill the lane and get to the glass. Street 
now with seven points, though nobody got the call they wanted. Murray out and winners in. One. The Street, the only Hawkeye in double figures in every game this season. Tonight, just one basket, but five of five from the line. Hawkeyes build their biggest lead, up by 11. Later for three. Drake does a good job of making some choices coming down court. That time, two on one from the perimeter. Offensive foul, Kevin Smith. His second. And Tom Davis said it, and Rudy Washington said it, and it's very true. The Bulldogs are vastly improved over a year ago. Well, they just have better athletes and better depth. They've got a lot of players at that wing position, kind of what you'd call a swing player that Rudy can interchange in that three and two and four spot. And it really gives him a lot of different looks that he can have with different lineups on the floor. Probably because the Bulldogs had so many newcomers. They were picked to finish last in the league in the preseason poll. So I'll bet you after they get around the league one time, people's opinion of that changes in a hurry. Let's check that last foul, by the way, on Kevin Smith. It's his third foul. We posed it's his second. It's his third. So that's something that the Hawkeyes need to watch. Barnes picking up his first foul. And going to the line will be Clayton Allen, a junior out of Texas, went to Lee Texas Junior College. Suffered a broken thumb during preseason practice, missed the two exhibition games, also the season opener. But now as he's worked back into the lineup, his minutes are increasing, and he's going to see more and more playing time. He can get out on the perimeter and actively defend on the perimeter, and that's what he really brings to this Drake team. See if I will get the ball out, tries to break quickly. Six-point Iowa lead of 32 to 26. A minute 32 to go in the half. Drake doing a terrific job defensively. The Hawkeyes having to work. Shot clock at 20. Barnes fires and scores. The key to the Iowa success offensively all year has been the unselfishness of the Iowa team right there. Street had an opportunity to take a shot, but he found Val Barnes more open. Exactly a minute left in the first half. Drake has not led, but they have hung tough. Hawkeyes get up by as many as 11. Now Drake has a chance to cut an eight-point Iowa lead. I'll tell you what, I really like Drake. They're shorter than Iowa, but they've got quickness, and then they use that quickness for good choices at the end. The quickness gets them down, gets them open shots, but gives them opportunities to drive, penetrate against Iowa. The shot clock is at 15, 16 more seconds on the game clock, and Smith connects for his ninth point. I'll tell you right there, Kurt Smith got through three Iowa zone defenders to get eight feet away from the basket, and then challenged Durrell. Kurt Smith just, he knows he's to be the leader of this team. He loves that role. He loves taking the critical shots, something Drake really missed last season. Seven seconds left in the half. And it's Drake basketball with 5.6 seconds. They're on their feet at the Drake Center. The Hawkeyes led by as many as 11. The Bulldogs have clawed back within six, and they've got the ball. Down to four seconds. To three. Two, one, at the horn, it is in and out by Kurt Smith. And an exciting half of basketball. The pace picked up in the second 10 minutes of this first half. And after leading by as many as 11, the Hawkeyes will go to the locker room for the six-point lead. The halftime score, Iowa 34 and Drake 28. We'll return to the sold-out Drake Center in just a moment. Unusual, Drake at 33%, but Iowa only 23 shots. Free throws, both teams shooting very well and rebounds very close. And Drake with uh, nine offensive rebounds in that first half of play, not something that we would have expected coming in here. As far as highlights of the first half, there was lots of above-the-rim activity, and A.C. Earl got that started quickly for the Hawkeyes. A.C. Earl's had a nice first half. 
Well, in this situation, I think you've got Kirk Smith. And doing what he does well, starting off the defense and then finishing the break. Now, we were talking about Earl inside. Well, and A.C. Earl has had a nice game, 13 points in that first half, including five of seven. Easy to shoot five of seven when you shoot them downhill like that one. The interesting thing for the Hawkeyes is just two points off the bench so far. On the other hand, Drake has received nine points from their bench. So it's a good second half brewing. The Hawkeyes lead the Bulldogs by six. Mr. and Mrs. Rich Cadell. Alvia. Rich Kennedy Ames. Mr. and Mrs. Rich Dillon from Hampton. Rich Corban from Oskaloosa. Rich Berg, Esterville. Rich Kenny from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Mr. and Mrs. Rich, Rich Anderson, Anderson from Bowie. Rich Crawford, Des Moines, Iowa. Mr. and Mrs. Rich Konowinski, Silver Creek, Nebraska. Mr. and Mrs. Rich Stop, South City, Iowa. Play the Iowa Lottery. We'd like everybody to be rich. college basketball scores from around the country on our Budweiser scoreboard. Well, you look right there, the Big East got Seton Hall. They're one of the top teams in the country getting a win. North Carolina, I think they'll get that one even though it's in the second half up by 33. So very bold. By the way, the top <laughs> ten out today, Duke number one, Kentucky moves up from three to two. Michigan's number three, Kansas number four. Indiana is fifth, North Carolina sixth, Seton Hall seventh, Iowa is eighth, Purdue and Georgia Tech round out the top ten. And the Hawkeyes lead a very short list of undefeated teams in the country. Yeah, there's nine of them left. Iowa with the most victories of that group. And you've got five of them in the top 25. And, of course, Iowa-Purdue right up there in the top 10. What do you have, four Big Ten teams in the top 10? Tom Davis said starting tonight, 20 games left in the regular season. He thought his ball club might have the toughest schedule in the country. If you take the top 15 teams this week in the country, Iowa has 40% of their schedule left against the top 15 teams. And that's not even including a trip to Minneapolis, a trip to Madison, yeah. a trip to East Lansing, which are always very difficult. Both teams back to their starters as the second half begins. Street goes to deep on Celestine. Street is having difficulty shooting the basketball. He's just one of five tonight. Larry, statistically, when you look at the sheet we get at halftime, you look right away at Kenyon Murray, James Winters. They play 22 minutes between them, and they are one for one combined, and that was Kenyon Murray's dunk. Shot clock stuck on 13 seconds as play resumes. Now it's rolling down to 10. But Drake should have more time. I don't think they ever have matter, though. Yeah. In fact, now it's reset at 20. Somehow, they have got the time long. Well, it's really, really off. Daphne hit that three. The shot clock is now at 10 seconds. The big malfunction on the shot clock. The Magma Coslin was nice enough to point out to Tom O'Neill, one of the officials working the ball game. When you go to the score uh, uh, board, or whatever they want to call it, the timer board, they have to set the clock. They can set it for anything, because women's rules will be different. If NBA teams came in, it'll be different. The reset is at 20 seconds. You look at the scoreboard, it shows 20 seconds on the reset. It should show 45. So that, it was reset, but somehow it got maladjusted to 20 instead of 45. And Todd, I don't guess the Bulldogs and the Hawkeyes need a whole lot of encouragement the, with the 20-second shot clock. Uh, that, that would be a way to really get the tempo <laughs> burning here at the Drake Center, but I don't think the two coaches agreed on that. Probably not. Big three by Daphne to start the half for the Bulldogs because it makes it a three-point game. See, they're resetting the computer if they can to get that reset. And so far, they're trying to push that. And as you know, with computers, boy, you have a little chip go haywire. You might as well throw the whole thing away. 
At least that's what I find out about my computer. <laughs> well, even in this $12.5 million facility, there are a few bugs to be ironed out. Apparently, that one was very quickly remedied because now 45 put back on the shot clock. So we're at the 1914 mark in the ballgame, if that's correct. And the Hawkeyes with a three-point lead and the basketball as soon as the shot clock situation can be resolved. That's Tom O'Neill. He's working the ballgame along with Sam Licklider and Sid Rodeheffer. You take a look at the substitutions in this ballgame. Plenty of them, 48 substitutions in the first half alone. While we have the opportunity, let's take a look at what's ahead for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Our next telecast comes up on Wednesday night from Bloomington, Indiana. The Hawkeyes and the Hoosiers is number eight against number five. What a battle. Hey, Larry, who was the last team to beat the Hoosiers at Assembly Hall? Probably the Iowa Hawkeyes. You're right. And they have won how many since then? Well, let's see. Uh, that was about, that was late two years ago. So I know they won at least nine straight. I'm going to say 13. 14. Very good. Very good. There's Barnes off the baseline. Winner's going high for the rebound. And a push is spotted. Sam Licklider right in the middle of the fray as Winters went to the deck. And if that's on Jeff Allen, that's going to be his third. He's had a little bit of foul difficulties in the early part of the season. They need him in there with that long-range shooting ability. Allen with three for Drake. Kevin Smith with three for the Hawkeyes. Step over here. Watch him right here. Hawkeyes can't score quickly off the inbound, so now the offense sets the motion. Collision between Earl and Adrian Thomas inside. And it results in a foul being called on Thomas. And Adrian Thomas now has his third foul. Well, this is a tough enough matchup for Adrian Thomas. You don't need to get a foul away from the basketball. That's just a wasted foul, much like his first one was when he tried to take a swipe at the ball from AC out on the perimeter. He needs to save those fouls for good situations. Winners to the hole to score. His first basket of the ball game. 36-31, Iowa. 18.25 to go. Interesting to see now what Iowa has done to try and keep Kurt Smith inactive in this game. Drake does a good job of flashing at the point guard, Val Barnes, to slow down Iowa's break. That, that's something the Bulldogs have done exceptionally well all night. Here's Earl in deep. Gets the roll, gets the shot, and he is fouled by Celestine. Top of the show, we talked about going inside the street and Earl. Very good tandem. Earl able to work for position. A fadeaway. You'd like to see AC take it hard to the glass that time. Not able to because of the body bump. Still gets it to go down with a touch. And now a chance for and one at the free throw line. Earl with 25 points Saturday night against Bethel. Woo! Season high. He now has 16. And the Hawkeye lead goes to eight. A moment ago is three at 34-31. But the Hawkeyes have a modest five-point run. So far, Drake has not been able to get the ball in the hands of Jeff Allen, their three-point shooter, nearly as much as they would like him to have it. I tell you, I like what they do. They get the ball in the hands of the shooters. Daphne, they get it in Smith. And then they try and get it into Allen's hand. Celestine knows he's not a scorer. He gives it up. Street takes it to the hole. So Chris Street trying to make something happen. Let's get another look at it. Oh, you see Street coming down the line. Jeff Allen recognizes it, gets to the spot. And Chris Street tries to take it up. But a good defensive position there for Jeff Allen to recognize his street had his man beat and he had to come over and help out. He's picking up his first foul. Just over 17 left in the ball game. The lob for Daphne. It was too long and hit the rim. Daphne from behind and the Hawkeyes will play it from the sideline. Good great 
technique there, chase from behind, you've got the man pinned against the sideline. What you do then is keep him there. You don't try and steal the ball as a defender. You allow a teammate to come from behind to flick it away. Wade Lookingville has got the only points off the Hawkeye bench so far in the ball game. Comes in and Street will leave. Really, Washington's done a nice job of putting this team together, having the people understand their roles. They are going to get better and better. you got to realize they are playing only their seventh game. Iowa the 11th. That's almost twice as many. That makes a big difference, too, Max. The last two years, relying primarily on freshmen. This year, with the influx of junior college players, more experience at the collegiate level with this type of basketball, and I think it's been reflected in their play in the early going. Allen will look to post up. He loves this move. He got Allen into the air and scored it. Val Barnes is as good as anybody in the country at six foot, posting up on the inside. And the Hawkeyes have scored the last seven points of the game. That time Allen with three fouls had to be cautious. Take away by Barnes. That's great help defense. Great recovery by Adrian Thomas. Here's Darren Daphne. Four points, turn around, or more, because the crowd is into the game now. Opportunity for Val Barnes to score it himself or give up an easy pass. Got himself in trouble with a wraparound. Both teams showing great tenacity, great hustle tonight. Spurred on by the sellout crowd. Murray finds looking Bill. And inside, a foul is called. Terrell and Thomas were both there. And it's on Thomas, and on Adrian Thomas, that is his fourth. Well, you see Val Barnes try the wrap around to Kevin Smith. Thomas with the nice save. Allen recognizes that Daphne's on a run out. Gets the ball to him. Darren finishes. So what happened, it ended up, as Val went behind his back, he ended up having the ball being kicked. And that's how come the ball popped up loose. And that is not an intentional kick. Therefore, the old kick rule is not in effect. You still play the ball. So Rudy Washington has to put his second best score. Adrian Thomas averaging 15.8 on the bench with four fouls. And when you have Wade looking both the line, you have the guy that's won the last two free throw contests before games at the shoot-around at the line. He won today. He's 75% on the season when they count. He's got four, and the Hawkeyes' lead is 10. 15-48 left in the ballgame. It is Iowa 43 and Drake 33. We'll be right back. Great time in universities and high schools and grade schools are also ending this semester. If the young man in your life did a terrific job in the grades and you want to reward him, a gift certificate to the boys' basketball camp at the University of Iowa might be just a ticket. In fact, Tom Davis will even send out an autograph gift certificate, so contact the basketball office for information about his terrific camp. Here's Smith against Smith up the baseline to score. Well, you wouldn't think somebody of that stature could take it up on A.C. Earl and get the ball home, but he just has a knack of finding a way to get the ball at the basket. In this case, what happens, Kurt Smith beats the quickness of Kevin Smith. Then if you beat the quickness, now you have to beat the size of A.C. Earl. And then the Hawkeyes turn it over after the score, so the Bulldogs again try to score, and they do so. Ray Slater hits his second field goal. Again, the dribble penetration brings Earl out. It opens up the short jumpers for you to get that defense. So a couple of times, the Hawkeyes have opened double-figure leads, and the Bulldogs of Rudy Washington keep fighting back. Earl well, gets inside Stanley. And Stanley has not the ability or the knowledge as a freshman to stop a veteran All-American like A.C. Earl. The foot quickness, there was none. Stanley's flat-footed. I think A.C. took him to school on that exchange. Kyrie Stanley, 6'11", at least 260, battling A.C. Earl. Earl with the rebound, and that is his sixth. There's Murray being challenged by Smith. And the turnover against the Hawkeyes gives the ball to the Bulldogs. And that's a freshman mistake. Kenyon Murray will learn that if the ball is grabbed from your hand, you have to let it go. If you come down with it like that, it's a travel. He keeps control of it. He'd like to have let it go and then be able to just pick it up and make a decision after that. 14-20 remains. The big guy 
Stanley against the double team. Tyree Stanley, a freshman from Linwood, California, makes it 45 to 39. The Hawkeyes lead stage to six. Here's Earl. I'll tell you, Stanley's presence has felt both ends. Nice head fake, get him the open shot, and then the deflection off Bartles. Earl with 20, back the other way for Kurt Smith, and a jump ball call. And the possession arrow will keep it at the Drake end. Well, Kyrie Stanley is quickly becoming a crowd favorite, especially of the student section. And he has come out here and played some good basketball in his freshman year. Well, you could call that either way. Stanley a little over the back, and that's a load to carry. Stanley trapped in the Hawkeye steal. The freshman's getting a lot of experience in a short period of time. The deflection by Slater. Here's Allen. Kurt Smith. Second basket of the half. 13th point of the ball game. And good hustle by Kurt Smith to not give up on it and take Clayton Allen's going to lay it in. He hustled down the court, got the garbage bucket. Smith all the way. Oh, what a drive. 15 for Kurt Smith. And right away, A.C. Earl says slow it down. Under control. The veteran, five years at Iowa. That way the team does not have to waste the time out. The Hawkeyes built the lead to 10. The Bulldogs have cut it back to four. 13.06 to play. Barnes Smith, Street, Webb, and Winters now in the lineup for the Hawkeyes. And for the Bulldogs, Alexander Sterla is about to check into the lineup for the first time. And Adrian Thomas with four fouls comes back with 13.06 to play. It's been a long time since Drake had a home court advantage like this against an Iowa team. This crowd is really into this game right now. So what do you think of it? Rudy Washington coming back with Adrian Thomas this early. Well, it's a big gamble because you could lose him here in one, two possessions, and then you have to go with Stanley for the last 12 minutes. Well, right now you got A.C. Earl out of there. He doesn't have to guard anybody that's as offensive-minded as Earl. Well, he's got to be careful there. That's awfully, awfully dangerous. And the other thing you've got right now is the tempo of the game has been up and down. The players want to get out of there for 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and then get back in. Donovan, echo something you said a moment ago. It's been a long time since the Bulldogs have had this kind of a home crowd advantage against the Hawkeyes. You're absolutely right. Hand check the whole way with Serla. And right there, Kevin Smith, I think he's a little tired. He's made a couple poor choices and resulted in turnovers for the Hawkeyes. Smith has had his brief rest. Serla, who's seen very limited playing time, picks up the foul and now will come back out of the ball game. So Smith gets just a momentary breather. Sterla started 14 games a year ago for the Bulldogs and saw quite a bit of action, quite a bit of action as a freshman, but he had mono in the preseason, missed a lot of workouts, and with the influx of talent, the, the depth of guard, he's just had trouble getting his minutes. Barnes shoots a pass down low to Winters, and Winters, who did not score in the first half, has two buckets in the second half, 49 to 43. Hawkeyes lead the Bulldogs. Drake is not led in this game. Here's Daphne. Just over 12 minutes to go. Drake gets around Thomas, and again, Thomas with four fouls has to lay off. Thomas out of position, and he really couldn't fight to get in position because of the foul situation. Allen finding Thomas. Webb is all over, but Thomas gets it in anyway. Second basket for Adrian Thomas. Adrian makes up for his lack of height with good strength. He gathers himself there to get the momentum and go up strong to the basket. Barnes and gets Barnes can break down people and then score. Kevin Smith will break down and look the pass. Barnes now 13 in the ball game in double figures, his eighth straight game. Here's 
is Celestine. And Val Barnes getting a lot of rebounds. That is his fourth. Good rebounding total for a guard. three-point shot you get long rebounds and players have to be aware that they'll come off literally in just unusual places that time right in the middle of the lane where Celestine was Iowa players had him blocked out didn't do any good Barnes tries to get around Allen Allen reaching in picking up his fourth foul so now the Bulldogs have two starters Thomas and Allen with four fouls apiece and Rudy Washington ponders the situation by the officials try to get everybody to cool it a bit. Remember, a point of emphasis and also a rule change has been the trash talking. If the officials want, they can call the technical on that and put the teams on the line. Now, Rudy Washington taking both of his players with four fouls out of the lineup for this particular situation. Let's take a look at the team fouls in the ballgame. Drake has already committed seven, so the Hawkeyes in the bonus, the final 10-20, while the Hawkeyes have some fouls to give. That, that's just great pressure by that Hawkeye offense to recognize when to go down to the block because of foul trouble. They've really put some pressure with the penetration on that Drake defense. They come up with some fouls. Barnes with 15. The Hawkeyes lead the Bulldogs 55 to 47. 10 minutes and 19 seconds left to play. We'll be right back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. Hi, Mary. We're running right on schedule. So confirm our 3 o'clock with Emerson, our 4 o'clock with Moore, and our 5 o'clock with Sherman. Whoa, Mary, we just hit one heck of a traffic jam. Better postpone our 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Introducing the new Steak Lovers Pizza from Pizza Hut. Special sauce, delicious steak, onions, and three kinds of cheese. We shouldn't be doing this. Hey, guys, sometimes you gotta stop and smell the pizza. Now available for dine-in, carry-out, and delivery where available. Ever since we sprayed the Cormac Buckdrill herbicide this afternoon, old Buck's been pretty excited. That's because Buckdrill gives us fast knockdown of velvet leaf, cuckleburr, and other broad leaves. In fact, the minute Buckdrill hits the weed, the show's over. When it comes to controlling broadleaf weeds in corn, nothing measures up to Buckdrill. Buck swears it works so fast, he can hear the weeds drop. Wherever Iowa gather, more are covered by the plans of Blue Cross and Blue Shield than any other. Don't you know it's true? You just can't beat the blues. Don't you know it's true? You just can't beat the blues. Here at the Drake Center, AC Earl with his fans. <laughs> Iowa leading Drake, 55 to 47. Larry Morgan, along with Mac McCausland, joined tonight by Todd Kim. Look at the foul situation for the Bulldogs. Allen with four and Thomas with four. So Rudy Washington really having to do a chess match with his substitution pattern. Montero Glasper is coming to the lineup at the timeout for the Hawkeyes. Lee e. Murray, Barnes up front. Kirk Smith, great touch around the basket. Just terrific touch. I'll tell you, he shoots it as you would have to do it in a playground situation against big people. You take it in, you stop, go straight up, and then you have little acrobatic shots, and then the ball just rolls off his fingertips so well. We know that's no accident. When Kirk Smith goes home in the summer on the D.C. playgrounds, he goes against guys like Patrick Ewing, Matumbo, people like that. <laughs> He's used to that sort of thing. You have to learn to do that, or you stand and watch. And he hasn't done much standing in his lifetime, you can tell. Big possession for the Bulldogs. They are within six, with 9.15 to go. 
Drake showing pretty good patience tonight. They got a little out of sync there in the first half, but for the most part, they've attacked this defense, showed good patience, and tried to get quality shots. Here's Daphne for three. And looking, Bill, pulls down the rebound. See, that ball's taken, that shot taken from the corner. It gives Iowa tremendous rebound advantage. And the reason, is, for Earl. the reason is, Larry, they have those two people low on the blocks in their zone. Thank you, a great steal. And dunk. No, well, finger off. He probably heard you decided to yeah. change his mind. 59-49. The Hawkeyes build the lead back up to 10. It's been to 10. It's been to 11. And the Bulldogs keep crapping back. The three by Kurt Smith. Terrell with the offensive rebound and then putting it in. It's Kurt Smith. He finds a way, doesn't he, guys? He is exciting. Rudy Washington wanted Kurt Smith to take this team to another level. He has really done that by just his presence, his playmaking ability, and more than that, his scoring, his ability to take over. What I like, Todd, is it's kind of a Kurt Smith personality. I mean, the whole team exudes his intensity, his quickness, his smartness of play. He's just flat out a tough basketball player. Don't let his lack of size fool you. I'll tell you, he may not be tall, but he's wide. He's got a nice body. Now let's take a look at some quick stats brought to you by Norwest Bank. Well, when you look at 16 for 17 from the free throw line, that's exciting for Iowa. Drake, not exciting, having Allen and Thomas with four fouls. Barnes goes to the line. Barnes tonight with 16 after hitting that free throw. Well, Barnes has got the 16. You look at Tom Davis at ACO enjoying a very good night, 9 of 12 from the field. Barnes perfect in five trips to the free throw line, now six. We showed you that free throw statistic a moment ago. The Bulldogs on the other hand have not been to the line in the second half just five times in the ball game. So at Iowa, they lead break by a score of 61 to 51. Hawkeyes just one foul in the second half. The Bulldogs with eight. And again, the surprising percentage by Iowa just missing one free throw. But that's what you've got to do on the road. Shoot throws. Have them go down. Typical Hawkeye basketball, though. Iowa getting to the line much more than their opponent. With the pressure they put down low, at the, attacking the basket, really, you can just make a living at that line. Stanley muscles his way in, and going high for the rebound is Winters. The Hawkeyes convert on this trip. They'll have their biggest lead. Unusual for an Iowa team. They have 20 turnovers in this game, while Drake just 15. Well prepared against the Iowa pressure. I was averaging only 17 turnovers in 40 minutes, and they had that figure with still seven minutes left. Barnes and Glasper along the back line. Now inside it is sweet in the crowd. Gets fouled, gets the basket. Cheryl with the foul, his second. A.C. Earl, a veteran, as he's about ready to get a five-second call, you can see the official doing the count. He puts it on the floor. That starts a new five-second situation. A veteran understanding the official and their hand motion. Three with 13. The Hawkeyes continue their phenomenal free throw shooting, 19 out of 20. And Nucky in the lineup for Drake. Where's number 20? Here's Allen in deep. Clayton Allen. Tough shot right up against A.C. Earl, kind of got it, kicked it off the glass, got the good roll. Barnes with another Hawkeye turnover, and the ball goes back to Drake. Oh, you see Clayton Allen take it up against Earl, kind of double clutches there, but gets it off the glass. Good drive by Clayton Allen, this Bulldog team. They wanted to come in and try and challenge Iowa underneath and not simply just pass it around and settle for those long jumpers. The Bulldogs come up the floor, down by 11 with 6.35 remaining. Very critical point here with Adrian Thomas and Jeff Allen back in the game here, both with four fouls. I would imagine Rudy Washington will watch those two. If either of them play very passively, I think he'll get him out of there because he needs him to be aggressive. 
Allen for three. He is a terrific three-point shooter. Has just two of them in this ball game, but is capable of hitting a bunch in a hurry. When he gets both feet underneath him, set. Tremendous shooter. Almost unstoppable when he's allowed to set. Move by I'll be interested in watching A.C. Earl. There's just six minutes left to go in the game. He has got one foul. I don't think you'll see people be able to come into the lane now without having a real aggressive attack by A.C. Earl. Oh, oh. Later goes to the lane. Gets his own rebound. Gets to go right back up with it. And Winters fouls it. Winners able to power his way up, sets his pivot foot, that left foot became his pivot foot, and he was able to wiggle through the Bulldog for the layup. And so Winners with the foul. That's only the second call in Iowa in the second half. The first free throws of the second half to be shot by Drake Grace later. On the season, Iowa, where you take a look at the difference, the differential in this ball game. For the season coming in, the Hawkeyes had shot 333. Their opponents, 95. Style of play really dictates that. Five and a half to go. Okay, spreading it out a bit, Max. Taking some time off the clock because every possession you can keep up for 40 seconds until you have to just take a quick shot with five left. Drake trying to run the zone helps Iowa keep the basketball. And now it's a reset. Iowa gets it all over again for another 45 seconds. See if they just look to keep it. They approach the five minute mark. They're going to try and move this ball on the perimeter a couple, three times around. Drake coming out into the passing lane for the deflection. You know, we talked about getting prepared for the conference season. This is something that the Hawkeyes will prepare them well because you know that down the road you face this in a conference situation. Well, the, as you said, the conference this week at Indiana at Ohio State. And it's also the first time Iowa's played in front of a real hostile crowd this year, and that's always a new experience. Talk about guys like Kenyon Murray getting their first experience. Always different to come in to an enemy arena. Absolutely right. Street on the drive, scores the basket, and he is fouled. What happened there, Iowa stayed wide and high in the zone offense. As they stayed wide and high, Drake went out to guard him. As they guard him, look at the gap Chris Street has to go through, grab the ball, take it up strong for the layup. Kurt Smith with the slap from behind, his second foul. Street to the line looking for his 16th point. Gives Iowa their biggest lead, up by 12, 59-57 with 4.38 to go. A great free throw shooting, and the Hawkeyes have hit their last six field goal attempts. Celestine, Thomas, Smith, Allen in the lineup for Drew. And suddenly, Allen is getting a hot hand. And like great outside shooters, He's a streaky shooter. Once he gets a couple down, then the confidence seems to flow, and then he really looks to set those feet and get that basketball. Here's a foul called on Celestine. Celestine with his third foul. Rudy Washington finding it hard to believe. Todd, as you look now, do you think Drake is going to have to go to the three-point shot, or are they going to try and have to find Iowa people to foul? With a little over four minutes left, you're going to have to try and find as quick a shot as you can. There's, you can't really run 25 seconds off that shot clock. Now, Drake needs to get down there. But if you get a two, take it, come back, try and play good defense, the problem is you foul Iowa, it's an automatic two tonight at the line. Now, any other night, you could look at the stat sheet and see who to foul. Tonight, everybody's got it on a roll. The Hawkeyes is a team this year 67% from the line, but have missed only one tonight. He hit three in a row from three-point range. Jeff Allen is on fire. 
Tom Davis will not like that. Especially off the dribble, because Kevin Smith just left him, allowed him to just turn and look at the basket. Most of the time, he gets it off a good pass. There, he just set his feet and shot it. Yeah, both Smith and Winters kind of just split the difference. Nobody took Allen. Now Iowa goes man, or excuse me, the Bulldogs go man to man. I was going to try and look to take advantage of that. The shot clock goes down to 15. This is quickness on quickness right here with this matchup. Kevin around, Kurt to score. Actually, Chris Street gave a little moving screen. He was trying to get out of the way. Created a screen for Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith keeping an eye on Jeff Allen, who's got the ball now, and he is red hot. Well, I don't think you're going to see Jeff Allen be able to get a shot off uncontested this time. Keep looking to Allen outside. The shot clock is down to 18 as Adrian Thomas gets straight into the air. But there is Earl to help out defensively. Earl pops it out of the air on the shot by Kurt Smith. We are down to two minutes and 22 seconds. And down 10 now. You're going to have to start fouling. Lengthen them out of, increase the number of possessions. Iowa going to their role offense. And Drake's going to have to put him at the line. And you've got one of the best shooters, free throw shooters in the country. Val Barnes led the Big Ten last year, free throw shooter. Crowd run at five seconds called as Barnes is able to advance it towards the basket. And now we have a foul away from the play. Or was a timeout call first? Nope, there was a foul, and it's called on Winters. So the Hawkeyes giving up the basketball. And now a timeout will be taken. That foul on Winters will be his third. So we're down to 156. I will lead straight by 10. We'll be back after this message from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. Whether you're a Hawkeye fan or a Bulldog fan, and there are plenty of both in the Drake Center tonight, you've got your money's worth. And you had a good ball game. A little rugged, like I said, even ugly at times. But both teams played very hard. Both teams grew a little bit, looking forward to their conference season. And with the shooting of Jeff Allen, the Bulldogs not out of this one yet. That is Allen. But he's not the only Bulldog that can shoot the three. Street with a rebound. His sixth rebound. Now Bulldogs are going to have to foul quicker than this. They've got to get that clock stopped now with under a minute 30 to go. And that's definitely the man you would want to foul. Monterre Glasper, a freshman. And Tom Davis coaching him just a little bit now, saying, hey, when you get it, give it up. Get it to Barnes right away. He leads the Big Ten in free throw shooting. It's definitely the man you want to foul, but it's not the man that Rudy Washington would want to commit the foul because his three-point shooter, Jeff Allen, commits it, and he is fouled out. You just don't have time now to be selective. Minute 29, you've got to take that foul right away. Uh, what a start Jeff Allen's had to his Division I career. Came out of LDF LeGrand High School, really kind of an unknown. Went to Marshalltown Community College, developed his game. Here he is two years later contributing at the Division I level. And that ends the spring. Of course, Tom Davis does not know that right now. The Hawkeyes have had three occasions when they've hit 100% from the free throw line. The last time being against Indiana in 1979. Their fourth best performance, by the way, was against Drake back in 1969. They hit 41 out of 43. Yeah, back then I was in charge of free throw shooting on that island. You were? Yeah, sure. <laughs> coaching him or shooting him? Uh, coaching him. Okay. Earl rebounds to Smith miss, and we are down to a minute 11. The Hawkeyes against a very determined Bulldog ball club look like they're going to be able to hang on. And that time, Val Barnes drawing the company, so he uses a timeout. Hawkeye ball when play resumes. A minute three left. It is Iowa 74, Drake 63. We'll return in just a moment. First test in a hostile environment. And they lead by 11 with a minute three left to play from the dog pound to Drake. Looking Bill on the breakaway, and with no choice, Rudy Washington, the coach's son, commits the foul. I disagree with that call because the rule really 
face if you're going for the basketball. And I think if you see young Rudy here, he definitely swings his arm around in front of the body to knock that ball out. They're going to give Iowa the intentional foul, though. Now you look at it here, looking Bill taking it up. Well, he does put the hand on the back, but he reaches around, gets a piece of the basketball. That's, you see a lot worse that aren't called intentional fouls. Well, you're right. But that was called an intentional foul, so it will be a Hawkeye position after looking Bill's free throw. And Iowa continues their phenomenal free throw shooting performance. You know, for officials, they really try and take the judgment out of the game. That rule is put in there, and I think it's a very difficult call for the officials. That one probably varies as much as any other call, like the block uh, charge call. Uh, it's very difficult to get consistency out of officials on that one. To call it an intentional foul, you got teams that are intentionally fouling <laughs> throughout the last minute and a half of a game, so they should probably change what they call the kind of foul. Now, AC can go in the backcourt and get that, and he kept his foot up. He did not go over that that line. Barnes drawing company. The Hawkeyes playing keep away. As we are into the final 40 seconds of the ball game. Now this Hawkeye team plays like a veteran team. Drake made a couple of runs at him. They always fought back, got the lead back, and now you see they're playing like a veteran team here in the waiting seconds. And Barnes turning it over on the five-second call. The Bulldogs have the basketball with 34.8 seconds left. And they are down by 13. Rudy Washington takes it to the hole. A double dribble, and the ball goes back to Drake. But we are down to 26 seconds. So the Hawkeyes remain in the thinning ranks of undefeated basketball teams. This 13-point margin, Iowa's biggest lead, really doesn't tell the full story. It's been a good Drake game. I've really been impressed with Coach Smith. He's going to add an awful lot to this team, and of course, the Valley, he's going to be one of the, the top newcomers. Especially when you consider, too, Mac, that the Valley is do a really guard-dominated league. you got some good big people like Ashraf Amaya, but for the most part, that's a league dominated by the guard court, so that's going to help Drake out. Time when you say guard court, some of those guys are pretty midget-like, too. That's Crawford right. and so forth. Morse, got some small guys there. I think you can forget about that prediction that the Bulldogs will finish last in the Valley. I can't see it happening. No, nope. and I'll tell you, you and I got a nice win. Yes, they did. They uh, got Tulsa on the road, surprised a few people in the Valley. That's the second year in a row that the Panthers have gone down to Tulsa and beat a pretty good team down there. In fact, right now, the two top scorers in the Missouri Valley Conference both reside in the state of Iowa. Chris Smith at Drake, Randy Blocker at UNI. Here's Jason Shea, a member of the Gray team, coming in for the final 17 seconds. Another thing that's going to help Drake in the Valley race, too. Seven of ten games this year in the month of February are in Des Moines. Two years ago, because of the unavailability of Veterans Auditorium, the Bulldogs had to play 10 of 12 during the month of February. That's no way to get momentum for a conference tournament. Hawkeyes, of course, on the road at Indiana. We said at Ohio State. And Larry, you know what that combination record for those two teams at home in conference games were last year? I don't know if I want to know. 17 and 1. Indiana undefeated, 9 and 0. Ohio State, 8 and 1. with the putback. And this is Skiller. And that ends it. And the eighth-ranked Iowa Hawkeyes remain undefeated. They've played three games in the neutral site in Puerto Rico, but this is their first road game, and it results in a victory. Again, the final score, Iowa 78, Drake 67.